Greetings, this is John Trips from Petaluma, California. And I wanted to take my kayak out to the river and do it uh, without using my car or vehicle. So I decided to uh, buy myself a used uh, e-bike, which I got from San Francisco, and then built a wooden trailer uh, and attached the kayak to it. And I was able to get to the river and back. Uh, so it was really nice, good paddling. Anyway, so this is the story of what I did and how I built this trailer. Uh, first, I purchased a uh, MI6 Magnum electric trail bike, uh, which seemed to be a little sturdier than uh, many of them out there. And uh, with the fat, fatter, larger tires, it uh, gives a little more comfort and cushion uh, and a little bit more traction. Here is the uh, finished trailer uh, that I was able to paint with both with primer and then with exterior white paint to make it more visible and so motorists will see me more easily. And it's stored is only two foot wide um, for the most part, except for the wheels, which is only 32 inches wide. And um, it's only about 11 foot long. So it fits right there on the side of the driveway. I can get in and out of the side of the house and into the, out of the garage. Um, so it uh, uses up small space and easy to store this way. Now I started with uh, two pieces of two by four plywood that's only half inch thick. The three quarter inch thick looked like a little bit overkill and a little bit extra weight, uh, considerably more weight. So uh, the half inch plywood seems to be adequate. Uh, that's for the top layer, which is right up here. Uh, to two pieces. And then this is the framing I did below. So the core of it is these two by twos that are eight foot long. And then I used uh, redwood two by sixes in between for struts here the back part and in the very front part. And then on the back part, I also uh, put the axle through two pieces of um, uh, drilled out redwood and attached the wheels to that through the axle and then applied a little bit of um, holding down power with the uh, with extra pieces of plywood, just uh, encasing that axle to prevent any type of bending that might actually happen. Probably again overkill, but uh, it's sturdy. And uh, notice uh, uh, the platform here, I've got some airspace in there between the, the redwood, uh, the two inches of the two by two. And I filled the area in here in the center to give it a little bit more strength so it doesn't flex too much uh, from front to back or side to side. And then the very front, I was able to add extra strength uh, with adding a two by two in the front to go up to the neck area and, and support there. And notice I did use some eyes in the back for, um, for hooking in latches and uh, ropes in case I need to haul anything. Now the tongue is a standard two inch tongue I bought off the uh, Amazon and I like this one because it is lockable and it has uh, an extra catch in here and e easy release on it and easy com comes off and on pretty easily and uh, is a straight two inch receiver on the back side here uh, standard size and I was able to use two bolts from here uh, up and down and one through the side here so three bolts holding and this piece right in here which goes from about here all the way back down to about here is a two by six which I carved and shaped so that to, to fill in and maximize the actual strength and structure of the central part two by twos were not large enough two by fours weren't large enough but the two by six uh, was and I just trimmed off a little bit of stuff that was right about in here and then you'll notice that there's some plywood basing on here to uh, help support. Um, that's where a lot of tension and angle and stress might happen. Then this is just looking at the back side of that. Here's that, that two by six. Um, that's all redwood. Well, redwood turns out to be a little bit lighter and has pretty good strength and has a little bit of flexibility uh, compared to your know, the pines and firs. So I preferred the redwood rather than that. Uh, but for strength, I then ended up, I had an extra piece of fur that was ended up here uh, for extra strength. Uh, um, and then, of course, I sandwiched it all between with half inch plywood and then both screwed and bolted on uh, through on either side. Um, and I think there's a total of four bolts up here that go all the way through and attach uh, to make sure good support. Now, underneath this uh, you can actually see that I've put in two spacers, one on this side and one on the other side, because it didn't quite fill in the whole space. 
and by stuffing it and before and then testing it and shaping everything so it's very similar you see the single piece of uh, two by six redwood that i cut in here that i carved out um, to um, make it easy to fit and, and very solid hold at the base of the neck um, there's actually four pieces of two by two that go in and these are old slightly twisted and uh, i should have probably used new straight pieces so i ended up with a slight angle on the neck coming down and under but the neck does come all the way down and goes underneath and so i've uh, been able to hold it with a extra long pieces here of the uh, two by twos which are attached both in the front area and underneath and here you can see the underneath area uh, so there's uh, extra screws that are attaching it down there and then I added in some extra bolts, uh, one in here, one in there, and another one in here, just for extra strength. And you can see that the uh, uh, two by twos go all the way back there. Added some eyes in the front, uh, for, again, for latching down. And you can see the eye here. Um, so I've got six of these eyes and then used uh, pipe clamps on either side um, where I may not have to have as strong a tie downs, but the front, the back, and, and this middle, I put in extra strong ties for my kayak. Now on the back side, you can see that the wheels are um, put in here on an axle, a half inch steel rod, uh, just from the hardware store. And these are 16 inch wheels. I decided to go to the larger wheels that have 200 pound capacity, just a couple dollars more for the extra strength and stability. And they have rubber, no flat tires, so I don't have to fill them with air or worry about getting nails in them because we have lots of glass and nails, lots of construction going on in our town. And so there's always glass and nails in the streets that you have to be careful for, as well as lots of potholes. So I figured, okay, maybe not the uh, could, uh, as much cushion as you get from air, but it's plenty good enough for, for, for my needs here. And then on the outside, of course, you put a washer here that's on the outside of the wheel on both sides. And then I used a cotter pin drilled. I, I shortened up the stem a little bit as a 36 inch, so I was able to take two inches off just with a sawzall and then use the cotter pin after drilling a small hole in there and that holds the washer in and makes for a fairly smooth round ride um, and not um, a lot of uh, friction and these also have some these wheels have bearings in them which cost a little bit more when you have the bearings in them rather than not but uh, really helps for a smooth ride of uh, minimum friction now the ball i had an extra ball that was on a hitch that i was able to uh, use this is probably a 30 year old ball but still quite usable and i put a platform on top of the rack uh, using plywood because it's stronger and flexible and so it can hold on to things and grab um, and not worry about splitting or breaking and falling apart um, had to use two pieces here to raise the ball up high enough to get it away from the tire and you see that down underneath this uh this knob down here which takes an extra large wrench to tighten up but still there's um uh, you don't want that hitting the back tire so i was able to raise things up enough and I have just a little bit of, of indent in here in, in the bottom area. So it's actually attached to the one piece that's uh, up above. And so give it a little bit more height away from that tire. Then I bolted everything down uh, with using uh, some wood, both in the front and the back sides that are shaped to the rack. And that's for extra holding power. And there's some extra bars that go across. So that keeps it nice and tight. It doesn't move at all. I test out using various wing nuts here or regular standard nuts and I end up using the wing nuts but it turns out that, uh, once I tighten these down especially with a wrench on the other side it's very hard to pull apart by hand you all need wrenches still to pull it apart and um, probably don't need the wing nuts and uh, no, don't tempt people to try to undo it uh, in case someone's walk, walking by so um, I would next time I'm just gonna take off the wing nuts and put back on the regular nuts um, now, the other uh, part here is that I um, wanted a, the, there is a hitch that goes across, straight across. And to reduce that from hitting these nuts, I, I pulled some of this board off. You can see where I cut off the top part of just a little bit and have the nuts so that a little bit lower down so that there's free motion back and forth as the uh, trailer moves so it doesn't hit the nuts at all. And this one over here, uh, uh, which shows you on the top left uh, right hand corner just shows you a different angle um, where I have this bottom board that's tucked in there nice and tight and that holds it from uh, side to side swinging um, as it's touching the braces on either side.
Here I am uh, taking off uh, over there where the <laughs> river is, and this is a rough, gravelly road. Um, it was a little bit difficult to start uphill. I did not use my motor or electricity to start, just to demonstrate that you can do it even without electrical power. Um, and you can see the turning radius is pretty good. It turns pretty easily. It does shake a little bit uh, in the back end, but that's pretty minimum. Um, and this is a very Looks rough good there. road. All right. And then, uh, besides hauling the kayak, I decided I needed to have a second use for this since I'm building it, uh, put so much money and time and effort on it. I happen to be a assistant teacher in a horticulture class. So I will be going to the high school where I used to teach. I'm not retired now, but I'm gonna, I got asked back to help out with the horticulture class. And I will be carrying all my gardening gear with me when I do this, so that's really nice. So you can see here a whole bunch of long handled tools on top of a um, a ladder, which I need to do to get on top of my green roof uh, shed that I built a few years ago when I was there at the school. And then I've got various pails with a few things in it. Um, that's going to be for uh, hauling out debris, weed and soils or transport water as, as needed, wherever I am. And then a box that's full of small tools, probably the heaviest part back here. That's probably about uh, 30, 40 pounds of, of little tools uh, packed in there. And then here's a little video of me that's uh, going around. And if it uh, shows, it's not moving, but it shows me going over in the circles. All right, here we go. It does go. So this is in front of my house. This is about a 20 foot uh, uh, road that's uh, dead ends at the end of the block. But I can easily turn around and I've gone up and down the sidewalks and around corners. I just have to be careful not to cut corners too sharply because it is a uh, 11 foot trailer. And here's the stats that uh, for the bike for pictures, it cost me less than $200 to buy both all the wheels, the plywood, the receiver, um, the ball and axle, other materials uh, I had on hand from other projects, the wood and the bolts and the screws. I talked to the dealership and they said uh, the rack on the back is holds 59 pounds. It's got four screws on it. Um, I think the uh, integrated racks on the back and the ones that have six screws are rated for 60 to up to 90 pounds and that they might be a bit better for, for this type of situation. But uh, our, my bike is working fine. The trailer weight end up with the wood and the wheels and everything is 60 pounds. I probably could probably cut that back with um, a little bit if I uh, trim things down, especially the neck area, but I thought no, I'll leave it there nice beefed up for strength. The weight um, with the empty trailer, the, the tongue weight on the ball is going to be about 30 pounds. I went and weighed it uh, when I was uh, picking it up and, and that's about the weight that you get. Um, the, so it's only about half the weight on the front and half the weight on the back wheels. The kayak that I'm carrying is a 16 footer and is a uh, um, polyglass so it is uh, 60 to 70 pounds total weight it's about 55 pounds uh, to 60 pounds of weight itself and then the gear itself is about 5 to 10 pounds so maxes out at about 70 pounds then I have a um, tongue weight that ended up being only being 45 to 50 pounds in there in that range test a couple different times got a little slightly different weights with my um, which I standard weighing machine uh, putting on different positions of different places um, of, of putting the gear on it but it ended up about uh, 45 to 50 pounds uh, average and uh, a lot of the weight would end up because the 16 foot goes way over the back side of those wheels that's why the, the trailer had to be uh, a six foot plat eight foot platform to start with uh, because it's a 16 foot kayak now the rate the ball I really like about that is compared to other universal joints is that there is at least 15 degrees of rotation to side to side and up and down and uh, I've got a full uh, over 90 degrees I can either um, go around in a circle easily at least 90 degrees the turning radius is less than 20 feet um, and it's pretty easy to do that going at a slow speed going at a faster speed probably not so much I uh, put on a total of 10 tie downs um, around the trailer so that make it easy to whatever gear I've got in the future uh, I can use tie downs or spongy cords 
which I can just carry in, in, a, in one of the containers. Uh, since the bike is a class three, it easily goes 20 miles per hour with uh, the extra energy. And uh, it's still pretty going so smooth on the road. So I was very happy with it. I tested some heavy loads. I put on um, a full generator and lots of tools in the back, paints of can. Uh, I got up to 140 pounds total weight and mostly in the back half. And uh, that ended up with a tongue weight of only about 60 pounds in here. Um, so as long as you move most of the weight to the back side, um, that that's going to work really well and uh, the trailer and the e-bike can handle all the weight but I do have to kind of watch the cornering uh, going around it so there's uh, um, just a little bit of instability as you take your turn so just be careful on that and also the parking stability when you put down the kickstand um, the trailer is willing to want to turn the bike over a little bit if it's not in the right position so you can have to test it out a little bit and I found it working at an angle when I put the bike at a 90 degree angle um, so this uh, weight is going toward the kickstand that that is uh, keep, keeps it stable um, if you try to just do it a slightly different way um, it can kind of pull over and fall down fortunately the trailer doesn't fall too far and uh, actually holds the bike up once the trailer is, is the front part is on the ground it holds the bike up so the bike doesn't ever fall over I do have a second trailer that's a small little box trailer and it attaches to the rear axle down there like a standard uh, trailers do and that I can use that for grocery shopping retail shopping um, or carrying a small set of tools somewhere if I'm going anywhere so I use the small trailer for those things but the large trailer for the kayak and the gardening and so I'm pretty happy with trailering now with my bike and it, uh, the, the having electric bike is wonderful uh, being an older person and uh, uh, working all day long, hey, going uphill back home makes for an easy ride. So thank you for uh, listening and uh, hopefully see you out there with your own e-bike and trailer.